Hi there, and welcome back to Statistical Methods. Um, this is now Lecture 4, where we will be covering um, the second half of Chapter 2, which looks at variability. In our last class, we learned about various ways to describe the central tendency of a distribution of scores, and we focused primarily on the mean. But today we will be learning how to quantify variability in scores. Now, variability is a general term referring to how spread out or dispersed a set of scores is. Now, I'd like you to consider the distribution of ages in this classroom. Now, most students will fall within a fairly narrow range, and there would be a lot of repeat scores. Now, this would be an example of a distribution with low variability, meaning that most people's scores would be fairly similar and thus not very dispersed along the x-axis of a histogram. Now take a moment to try to think of another variable that we could measure for our class that would likely have high variability, or at least higher variability than age. So now once you've thought of a variable that would have high variability, let's take a look at what low variability and low variability rather and high variability looks like in a histogram. Now a distribution with low variability is seen here on the left. Um, right, so there's greater similarity among scores. It's less spread out around the mean or in other words there's less dispersion. But on the right here we have a variability, um, rather a distribution with very high variability. So there's less similarity among scores. They are more spread out around the mean and there is greater dispersion. Right, so there's a high frequency of scores at various range on this x-axis. Now, how do we quantify variability? So we've already discussed several statistics that communicate the central tendency of a distribution, and we focused on the mean, median, and mode. But what statistics can be used to communicate information about variability? So generally in statistics and in the social sciences, we look at the range, variance, and standard deviation. Now the range is simply the difference between the highest and lowest scores, and it gives us a fairly limited amount of information. So on a one through seven scale, range would be six, even though only one person scores one and one person scores seven. Um, so this doesn't utilize every score and doesn't give an overall sense of the distribution. Um, so to visually demonstrate this, all three of these distributions below have the same range, six. So it's not very informative, um, but perhaps we can do better. Now the sample variance, which is often denoted, uh, denoted in formulas as SD squared, is one way to describe how spread out scores are around the sample mean. And we're going to start talking about how to calculate this. And I want you guys to think about how you might implement this in Excel. I will later demonstrate how to do this. So step one is to calculate the sample mean. So we've already done that. And then we're gonna subtract this value from each and every score in the distribution. Step two is to square each of these deviation different scores. And step three is to sum up the squared deviation of scores and divide the sum of the squared deviations by the number of scores. So step one, um, the score that we get from subtracting the mean from every score is called the deviation score. And we calculate this for every score in the data set. When we square each of these deviation scores, this is called a squared deviation score. And when we sum up the squared deviation scores, we call this the sum of squared deviations, or simply and more commonly, the sum of squares. And when we divide the sum of squares by the total number of scores, 
That is our variance. So does summing and dividing by n in steps three and four sound familiar? Well, it should because this is exactly how we calculated the mean or the average. Thus, variance is simply the average of the squared deviation scores in a data set. Now, when scores are more spread out around the mean, these deviations and their squared values will be larger. Hence, variance communicates information about spread or dispersion in a distribution. So why do we use squared values? Well, this gets rid of negatives. So we don't care about direction here, positive or negative, just about the distance from the mean. So why don't we use absolute values? Um, so just to remove the negative signs. There actually isn't a very simple answer for this, um, but if you are curious, you can follow this link to get some more information. Now, looking at these two distributions below, think about what the sum of, uh, the sum total of all data points deviations from the mean would look like. So on the left, you would see much less deviation from the mean um, for each individual score. But on the right, there's a good deal of dispersion. So this distribution has a lower variance while this distribution has a higher variance. And here are the actual variances for these distributions. Now, returning to that country person data set that we used to talk about mean, imagine that everybody in the class on this data set answered three. Thus, the mean would equal three. And it does in the actual data set, but imagine that everybody in the class responded three to this particular question. That would mean that the deviation score for, from the mean for each and every subject would be zero. Therefore, the variance would be zero, since there is no deviation from the mean everybody on the entire scale scored the mean on the particular question. Now in the actual data set, the scores were more spread out than this. And subtracting the mean from each value or each score and squaring these values and then averaging these squared uh, deviations gets us a variance of 4.41, roughly. So now I'm gonna take a moment to go through calculating this in Excel for that particular data set, the country person data set. And afterward, I'd like you to try to replicate what I've done. Again, the data set will be available online on the course page. Now, as you can see, we are back in the country, per country person data set. Um, however, it looks a little different because I moved this over to the right now to add a few more columns. But we have our mean in cell I2. We also have it in J2, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I will be using this one here. And I created a column for deviation scores. So again, that is each and every score minus this mean here. And then another column for the squared deviation scores. So to calculate this deviation score in Excel, I'm gonna simply start with an equal sign, of course. And since I have my scores in column B, the first score appears on row two. So I'm gonna enter B2 minus, and this is where it gets a little tricky. So I want to have this for every single calculation I do of deviation scores. And I don't want Excel to carry down a different value in this column. If I were to drag this down, you'll see how that plays out in a second. So what I'm gonna enter here is instead of just typing in I2, I'm gonna type in I dollar sign two, so that this value is locked in for every calculation I do afterwards. So if I hit enter, I should get my deviation score for this particular score. So that's one minus the mean, but I want that for every single score. So what I'm gonna do is click on this little tiny box here and drag it all the way down. And since I used the dollar sign here, each and every one of these should lock onto this particular cell I2 rather than this one using I3, this one using I4, 
So that's what the dollar sign does. It locks it onto one particular cell. Um, so you can see that right here in the formula for each and every one of these calculations. Now to calculate the square deviation score, I'm gonna enter equal sign. And since my deviation score is in C2, I'm going to square it. And now if I drag this down, since I'm not using a dollar sign, each one should update to the particular cell I'm interested in. So this one is C2, but this one is using C3 and squaring it, C4, C5, and so on. Now here is my sum of squares column or cell. And I want to calculate the sum of squares. And what I'm gonna do here is uh, take the sum of all of these squared deviation scores. So I'm gonna enter equal sign D2. Sorry, rather I'm going to enter equal sign sum open parentheses D2 colon D33 to get that entire range of scores. And if I hit enter, that is my sum of squares or sum of squared deviations. Now remember variance is the average squared deviation. So what I'm gonna do here is calculate the mean essentially for this column, dividing the sum of squared deviations by the number of scores. So to do that, I'm gonna hit equals K2 divided by count D2 through D33. Now I mentioned that the variance was 4.41 with rounding, that works out. And now I'm gonna to pause to go back to the slideshow to talk about standard deviation. So as you can see here, the variance calculated through SPSS, which is a statistical analysis package created by IBM, lines up with what we calculated by hand in Excel 4.41. But in practice, as social scientists, we rarely report variance as a descriptive statistic. So why is that? Well, it's difficult to interpret variance because it is based on square deviations. So it's not really expressed in the actual units of our measured variable. So the solution to this is simply taking the square root of the variance, which, us, uh, which returns us to the original units um, in which our variable was measured. Now this stat is called standard deviation. So that is the square root of the variance. Or in Excel calculation, we uh, raise the variance to the 0.5 power, which is the same as taking a square root. And I'll demonstrate that really quickly in Excel. Right, so to calculate that standard deviation, I'm gonna enter equal sign. Um, variance, so that's L2. We're raising to that 0.5 power to get the square root. Now, an easier way to calculate standard deviation, and this uses a slightly different formula, so the number will be slightly off. So on assignments, use this type of way to calculate it. Um, but the way to do this here is equal sign STDEV and your series of scores. So that's B2 through B33. Enter. So Pretty similar, um, but slightly different. So I would use this one, which is based off the equation that we use in this class. So I'd like you to replicate what I've done here on your own, just for practice. So the standard deviation involves direct, ordinary, not squared deviations from the mean. And it can be defined as the average amount that scores differ from the mean or in other words, the average distance of scores from the mean. 
Now the mean and sample standard deviation are the two basic descriptive statistics that will almost always be reported for any measurement taken in a social science paper. You can see that here in a results section from a paper in moral psychology. So here's our mean, and that means standard deviation. Another mean, and that means standard deviation. Now here's how we interpret standard deviation. So this is another data set um, that was from an earlier statistics class. And the variance in this data set was 4.55. And the square root of that was 2.13. So that was the standard deviation for this sample. And what this means is that scores in this distribution um, differ from the sample mean either negatively or positively, positively by an average of 2.13 units. So it's as simple as that. That is the average distance of scores from the mean in that particular sample. Now here is the equation for variance and standard deviation. And we've already done this. I know it looks somewhat complex, but we've done this in Excel, Excel already. Um, so it's really not that hard. So variance equals the sum of scores minus mean squared divided by the sample size, or in other words, the sum of squared deviations divided by the sample size. Standard deviation is radical sum of squared deviations divided by the sample size. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the sum of squared deviations is more commonly referred to as the sum of squares denoted as SS. Thus, we can simply express these formulas more simply as Variance equals SS divided by N, and standard deviation equals radical SS divided by N. And as you saw, calculating our samples, variance and standard deviation requires the same basic Excel functions we already learned. Average, sum, and count. We also learned about this new trick, the dollar sign. So carrying down or copying formulas over multiple cells. So using this dollar sign to refer repeatedly to the same cell allows us to calculate our uh, squared, or rather our deviation scores. And we also learned how to get a square root by raising to the 0.5 power, which is necessary in Excel, since there is no square root function on a standard QWERTY keyboard. Now I'd like you guys to do some more practice in Excel. Um, so on the course page, I posted um, a spreadsheet called variability practice. And this contains, I think, three randomly generated data sets with different ranges. Um, and I'd like you to practice by calculating the variance and standard deviation of each of these small data sets. You don't need to submit this anywhere. This is simply for practice, but I strongly suggest you do it. Um, because you will like to have this very solidified going forward. Now for Monday, um, we have homework due before midnight. Um, so that is Monday, September 7th. That is on my stat lab. I'd also like you to begin reading chapter three to prepare for next week's lecture slides. Well, have a great weekend. Good luck on the homework. And I look forward to sharing more information with you guys next week.